Hello and welcome. This is the Love Rugby League Weekly. I've got to make sure I get the right one in because I'm in a, we, we've we've never really problems. decided the name, have we, properly? But yeah, it so seems to have caught on. This, well, after two years. <laughs> it's, got to, it's kind of stuck, hasn't it? Yeah. So uh, we are in association with our sponsors, Betfred. Delighted to be joined by James, James in plural <laughs> today. We've got James Messenger, James Gordon. And um, first of all, before we get cracking with uh, quite a packed show, uh, what's on site that people can peruse? We've got loads on site. We've got a good gossip column this week. Um, I've been manning the fort on my own because Drew's been on his jolly, so um, I've been working hard this week for a change. I know, uh, I know he's in the background, actually. Yeah, he's, that, he's got he's that, much to, ca- yeah, he's that he much to catch up on, is it? Um, we've got New Zealand have been Hi invited guys. to play in the, uh, in the 2020 European Championship. That's gone on this morning. Um, Drew's working on an expansionist blog actually as we speak. We've got all the uh, all the regular bits and bobs that we normally have, Dave. Rugby League today is going down a treat at the moment. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The final podcast was also Finally, the podcast, Championship expansion is another um, topic that's being covered on the site this week. Is this expansion or is this game contraction? We're going to be discussing this in a little bit. Uh, of time. Expansion in number of teams, shall we say? We've got slightly differing views as per normal. Um, <laughs> James is here to add some sort of semblance of normality because me and, me and James will just end up bickering like old women. I'll say, at least I'm not in the middle this week. It's like, like watching ping pong like the whole can time. We a, can we have a mention? This is, this is. I don't know if you can see this table on the camera, but this is basically where Drew dumps all of his programmes. Oh, I've got some games. There's my pen there as well. Oh, your pen. <laughs> so it, got, it. There's a lot of Wigan Warriors programmes on here. We've got 4020 magazine. We've got the papers. But I want it, I've just added a couple of mine. The new camp. The programme from the new camp. You might as well just um, go. The programme from the new camp. Yeah, programme from the new <laughs> camp. And then Magic Weekend programme. R- uh, which, of course, the Magic Weekend programme. Edited by a friend of ours here at the pot at Love Rugby League HQ, Ian Shubo. There you go. He never asked me. Come on, well, Super League though, Dave. Come on, Ian. Spread it round. I mean, I know lots about rugby league. Super League's not your bag, though, is it, Dave? It's all my bag. It's all my bag. I've got a general, a general gist. Right. Okay. Let's uh, crack on. I wanted to first of all start with Betfred League One. So a quick run through the results from last week: Coventry Bears eighteen, North Wales Crusaders thirty-four, Doncaster fifty-four, West Wales Raiders nil, Keithley Cougars twelve, Oldham fifty-two, Newcastle Thunder eighteen, Hunslet thirty-two. And Whitehaven 32, London Scholars 6. If we could come to you, James, because last week we were talking about League One, weren't we? Yeah. And we were talking regarding what we thought, because that was a top of the table clash, really, between Whitehaven and London Scholars. Mm. That's quite a resounding victory in the end, really, isn't it, for, for Whitehaven? It's probably a bigger victory than we might have expected. As was said, they've, they've sort of been leading the way in, the, in League One this year and said how competitive the whole league is. And even last week when we were speaking, we were saying, Right, there won't be a lot in this, and then to get to get a win like that, I'll do the confidence. The world are good, and you wonder if they can kick on from that now. Because I don't know what the the gap is at the top of the table now, but I'm guessing a few more wins, and maybe they can try and establish that gap, which has not really been in League One so far this year. It was, it was six all at half time, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean that's that's so what you call give it a, a second <laughs> half, uh, a second half showing, isn't it, from Whitehaven? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're quite right when you mentioned there about. There's not been too much between a lot of the teams at the top of that division. White team currently have 15 points. They played again less than London Scholars, who are second with 13. Then you have the likes of Oldham, Hunslow, Newcastle, and Doncaster making up the rest of the player. I've, I mean, it's quite an important year to get them open, isn't it? I mean, with all the uncertainty of what's happening, um, you know, stuff like that, it's quite a big year to get to get promoted. And obviously, the fact Scholars is up there, no one would have predicted predicted that. They'd be up there, and obviously the Cumbrian teams will be, will be desperate to to go up as well. And you know, once they've had a decent start, haven't they? So I'm really pleased to see the likes of London Scholars progress at that level, um, and Newcastle as well. They're, they're starting to create their own players, and they've got their own pathways. And What's happened with Scholars? Do we think it's the Toronto effect? Do, you know, is there mo- they, they get have they got a bit more money behind them now? Is that? I don't think so because it's largely the same players, but mm. they have. They have managed to introduce one or two extras. They've got a bit of a dual partnership going on with London Broncos. Mm. Um, whereas London Broncos were kind of spreading their talent over the last couple of years between sort of Hemel as well mm. uh, and Oxford. Obviously, them two clubs aren't anywhere near the league as we speak. Although, Contraction day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, always something that I don't like to talk about really. Um, let, let us let us sort of move on from that because uh, this coming weekend there is absolutely no fixtures 
in League One. Takes a back seat because of the 1895 Cup. Um, so, and one team guaranteed to be in the quarterfinals because Oldham play Doncaster. So there's at least one League One team going to be in the uh, the quarterfinals of the 1895 Cup. That's right. Um, but there's been something that I saw, and I know you've seen it because you, you put an article together on it um, midweek from uh, is it Andrew Chalmers, yeah, who's the, yeah. uh, the the guy at uh, Bradford, Bradford who's been very outspoken. Uh, He's good for he is good for for a quote. To be fair, he talks rubbish. <laughs> he talks absolute rubbish. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously that's a matter of opinion, but yeah. Uh, but he's mentioned mergers. Yeah. Um, and, and we were having a discussion before we got started, which got quite heated at one no, point. I, I, uh, regarding the future of League One, so here you go. Well, I'm chucking you under the bus. Well, first think, of all. Think, well, I mean, obviously there's a concern that the funding's being withdrawn, and um, clubs aren't going to be able to compete at that level, and there's obviously a bit of uncertainty that. Well, everyone's uncertain, aren't they? No one really knows what's going to happen. And is it a case of, ah, is League One going to be able to continue to operate at the level that it is that it is now? But you were suggesting two divisions of 16, like what Andrew suggested as well. Well, sort of, I, think, I sort of think that you have Super League and Championship would be the two pro leagues, if you like, and then anyone else goes to join either the Southern Conference or National Conference League, whatever you, whatever you want to be. And obviously... You know, I know what you're going to say. It's it's how do you get to the point where you choose which teams are being mm. kept and which aren't. I mean, in some ways, is there an argument to say, would you be better having a larger championship like you know back in the, you know, in the second division days where well, it did operate with eighteen yeah, teams yeah, on more than one occasion. Yeah, so. and you know, you know, like Northern Four Premiership days. Is, is there an argument to go back, you know, contract the salary cap a little bit downwards and 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 box it? I think the the thing at the moment is you've got you've probably got League One's an interesting one because you've got these sort of organic expansion clubs like Newcastle, London, Coventry. Yeah, you're doing some wonderful stuff. North, North Wales to be fair, mm-hmm. you know, as well. You've got young and new clubs like West Wales ish and you know, Ottawa potentially next season. But then also you've got these surplus Heartlands teams, if you like, which are effectively the four or five remaining Heartlands teams that there's not enough room for in the Championship, which is ultimately what it is, isn't it? Doncaster, Whitehaven, Worthington, Oldham, Hunslet, Keighley. Then, then ultimately those teams are basically ended up where they are because, say, Toulouse, Toronto, Catalan have progressed up, which has knocked them down a little bit. We kind of mentioned this in a roundabout way last week, didn't we? Yeah. Just with regards, um, particularly Keithley, because they opted to uh, terminate the contract to Craig Lingard. Yeah. Um, and everybody's wondering what this future holds. And that seemed a bit of a surprise. Well, Keithley now, by the way, have, uh, they've gone right back to full 90 style. They've got Phil Larder, who's gone back in there as a coaching consultant. So that's an interesting move for Saturday. Definitely, but then you, you look at some of the League One teams and going forward in the next couple of years, you can see a lot of them struggling financially in it. How do they get around that issue? The, the talk about maybe bringing some of them up to the Championship, it could work, but then you have to think about the quality of the Championship. If you brought four or five or six teams up, do you think that maybe diminishes the, the quality of the competition? Because that's one thing that we've, we've kind of enjoyed this year. We've spoken about it a lot, Dave, where in the Championship anyone can beat anyone. Mm. There's competition at the top, there's competition in the middle, and there's competition at the bottom as well. Apart from Toronto. Yeah, Toronto, obviously, they're just, they're just in a class of their own at the minute. But then you, you wonder you wonder where it goes if, if you brought in a few more clubs, whether the, the thing that's made the Championship so appealing this year is kind of being eroded just to shoehorn more teams in. I think, I mean, what a point of that, it, was, it, was it Oldham? Did Oldham beat? So it would be someone's a League One team beating the Championship team this season, haven't they, in the in the Challenge Cup? I'm trying to remember who it was. Yeah, I mean, was it's it White, was it White Avery? It's happened White a couple of times. Yeah, exactly. I don't think there. I don't think there's a massive amount between the teams. You look at York this season. It's certainly not the top four, four or five. Yeah, yeah you look at top York. Three or four of the championship. You look right. at York have come up this season and a third in Championship, having been in League One last season. Um, obviously, the Keithley thing. I think everybody knows they need to, you. A bit like we were talking about, well, which team would you choose to uh, be in the championship? You're better off being in the championship, aren't you, ultimately? Yeah. Oh, definitely. No. Uh, Lewis Banks has joined us again. Thank you very much, Lewis. He's suggesting, or he's asking the question, would you perhaps bring in licensing for the championship? Well, well, we were just having this debate where, you know, I 
I wouldn't. I, I mean, I think culling teams is a harsh way of putting it. You chuck a couple of names yeah, of teams that would maybe there's like, probably, or yeah, not there's, like to there's probably te- maybe drop out of the yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. There's probably teams that if you were if say if you if you were given the list of twenty eight teams or how many there are, and you had to pick sixteen, mm-hmm. you know there would be you'd pick certain ones, wouldn't you? So maybe there's the argument to say, well, okay, we'll, we'll put a bit like with licensing, we'll put some stipulations in and say, right, they need to have this number of average fans, you know this amount of they've got to commit this amount of money to spend whatever i think a, an important thing to to say as well is the salary cap got elasticated to accommodate toronto and, and all that and will it stay elasticated well, it would appear that, to recover? well that's mm-hmm. well you'd imagine that's going to happen but the problem you have with that is that say lee and even with this to an extent next season have got this massive headspace to basically overspend to get into super league and i i, I just think that's a bit anti it, it sort of removes the purpose of the salary cap. Whereas if you if you reduce the salary cap, say you made the salary cap half a million or whatever, which it and, was once upon a yeah, time, yeah, yeah, and, and, no, and no one could spend more than that. You then don't get the top clubs hoovering up all the best players. Mm. You have a little, and that then maybe links to what James said about expanding the league a little bit. That the spread of quality goes wider, you know, wider across the league. I mean, it's a conversation that isn't just exclusive to Championship and League One. You could have this conversation about Super League as well. Yeah, I mean, there's, that, there's teams that are spending sort of right up to the cap who could spend more, and, and then others who can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. you know, you, you like, you know, you look at witness last season. Witness was spending nowhere near this felt salary cap. I think I, my opinion is that you've got to decide. I think they've got to decide. Do they want franchise clubs or do they want? what you call traditional clubs or normal, yeah. normal clubs because it's like is it really that beneficial for Super League or Rugby League if this season Toronto get promoted and London Broncos get relegated because you know the reason why Toronto or Ottawa or New York or whatever while well, everyone's getting starry eyed about them is because they're big cities and people want them in Super League but if you've still got promotion and relegation what happens if you're big starry you know if Toronto finish bottom and get relegated, do you, do you know what I mean? I'll still be honest here though, I'd sooner see, I, I know uh, Drew's normally a big advocate for anything expansionist and you know he does a, a great job with his blogs and stuff that he, he always puts out there. However, I, I would always like to see more natural expansionism. I know it takes longer and there's got to be a long ball game with it. But ultimately, you know, this is like when, when I was away in Serbia, the most encouraging thing was seeing Serbians play in rugby league. Yeah, and, that, and that's the point. We had a, we had another conversation about academies, didn't we, Dave? Where <laughs> the bottom line is, is the more teams there are, there needs to be more players. And if the new clubs aren't bringing players through, and I know there's the argument that it takes years and years, which is fine. But yeah, I do think there's a, there's a very blurred line, isn't there, between sort of someone with a load of money signing a load of Aussies and English players yes. to play in a big city compared it's, to say an Alan Robinson at Coventry who's trying to grow rugby league in Coventry because that's expansion for me because yeah. he's growing interest and he's getting players and they're producing players through other means and they? while they, them players aren't necessarily good enough to play Super League now in 5, 10, 15 years they may bring through a Coventry born player that can play a bit like what London have done you know if you said even probably 20 years ago you wouldn't have expected, say, McCarthy Scars, Rook Tone, Club, Kieran Dixon, you know, them sort of players, Dan Sargeston, to have mm-hmm. come through the London system and actually... And that's quite a... You know, it it takes these, these aren't bang average players. These are, like, decent quality, some international standard players. But then there's definitely a difference, I think, between growing a team in an area organically and then growing the awareness and the recognition. So you look at someone like a Toronto or an Ottawa... Who they'll they'll go out and they'll spend spend hundreds of thousands on different players, but at the end of the day, apart from getting getting decent crowds, it has to be said, especially Toronto, mm-hmm. Lamport getting what seven eight thousand, they're not really encouraging people in Canada to pick up a ball. You, we've not really seen much much of that happening. But, I think, and that, but I think that's where there's conflict with, between the two yeah. models. It's like yeah. you have the franchise model, or do you have the the club. Model. I want to bring Lewis back into the conversation here because he sent us another message. He says, committing money to spend and average fans go hand in hand. There's too many clubs being run on a shoestring. Traditional clubs still offer loads to the game, but they are not the future if we are going to be a global sport. But again, what's the outcome of it? Well, are, we after, are we after global domination? Well, that's the thing. I, I, think it's very naive. I think it's very naive because I think ultimately rugby league's existed for 120 years, whatever. 
So it's not as if it's a you know brand new. It's not been a secret for all that time. Every other sport in the world wants to be a global sport. You know, ultimately everyone's competing with football, and a lot of a lot of sports are far more advanced than rugby league is. You know, like like it still may, it still it quite it amazes me sometimes that people think rugby league should get this coverage by default, but rugby league isn't massively bigger than a lot of you know like the internationals. Everyone always says, oh, you need a good international game. Well. They have internationals in ice hockey, they have internationals in basketball, they have internationals in whatever else. Like, you know, Great Britain ice hockey have just been playing in the top division in the world in the World Championships. Well, have you seen that covered anywhere? It's barely been anywhere. So, so I don't free think... sports, isn't well, it? Well, that's what Basically. I mean. But, but what I'm saying is, is, just because you've got an international game doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to break through the traditional means of, you know, what gets covered and what doesn't. It's a great point, Lewis, though, and I, I love your comments, so do keep them coming in. Maybe one or two other things for you to ponder if you're thinking of sending us a message uh, this afternoon. Rugby League the Musical. Yeah, I'm going to hit the street credit here. I've been watching the Elton John film just a couple of days ago, Rocky Man. Um, and yes, it's a musical. Did you not carry his piano when he was playing at Lee? <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I've got carried at Lee that I've carried at Lee. But <laughs> Elton John's piano is not one of them. I bet you could probably hear it from your house anyway. Did you not? Go? The wind was in the opposite direction, and to be honest, I was in Whitehaven that particular weekend. Oh, right. Yeah, they were playing away at Whitehaven, so I missed it. You missed the candle in the wind gag there, didn't you? Really? Could have. Oh. Are you going to chuck a candle in the wind oh, gag? Too late. Now, it? it's, it's a moment gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. There's a bit tumbleweed that sort of. Blowing across the back there. <laughs> um, right. Um, so, yeah. I want Rugby League the Musical. What songs would you put in there? I'm going to open this out to you two guys because you were having a good think because I, I gave you a, a good 45 minutes to think about this before. My one was Money, Money, Money. Uh huh. It's a rich man's world. Yeah. That was mine. Uh, yes. To be fair, they could play in preview to uh, Witness Toronto later on <laughs> in the season. That would be a good uh, theme tune for that match. I'll say, I'm sure. I'm sure that there's a lot of good suggestions. Uh, Drew had a fantastic suggestion, yeah. which was uh, "Stop Crying Your Heart Out" by Oasis. Now, this could be attributed to quite a few people. Yeah. You know, currently, um, yes, the Norris isn't having. Yes, the Norris. Yeah, it's yes, the Norris. Yes, yes, the Norris isn't having the best of time in rugby league because he's not involved. Uh, <laughs> is he a shout for new leads coach, Dave? Well, in never know. He, he kind of fit. He kind of fit in, wouldn't he, with the old boy in that. Uh, but Kevin Sinfield isn't having the best of luck over there at Leeds, is he? Um, you could also attribute it to Adrian Lamb and the fact that Wigan aren't really doing much this season. Uh, Drew's not responding. He's, he's not doing not very well. There. What about, what about, about I, I, I've just thought of another one. We could have schools out, but for rules out. Oh, for the witness, <laughs> yeah. for the witness, for the witness uh, connection there. Well, they don't rules out. They don't play by rules, do they? Don't oh, they? never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. thing. That's another thing. thing. Um, so yeah, so any suggestions of any songs that uh, have a tenuous rugby league connection? I don't just want Tina turns the best sort of cropping up there. Well, right, Ali, 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 Ali. You know what I mean? That went down like a balloon, didn't it? Uh, what's that one? <laughs> what's that one? <laughs> <laughs> what's that one? Well, we're talking chant time, and that's a popular one. No, not chat. Yeah. Talking yeah. Songs. I know, but you've got to chill the crowd, music. haven't you? You've got to chill the crowd. Well, anyway. I can see anyway. you're trying your best. <laughs> <laughs> not going down too well, the minute. <laughs> Led balloon. Led balloon. Uh, right, bet for a championship. Let's move on, right, before uh, James digs himself any other holes. Uh, Barrow Raiders 54, Rochdale Hornets 10, Batley Bulldogs 24, Halifax 16, Beverston Rovers 42, Bradford Bulls 4, Sheffield Eagles 16, Toronto Wolfpack 42. Swinton Lions 22, Dewsbury Rams 17, Toulouse Olympique 44, Lee Centurion 16, and Widnes Vikings 12, York City Knights 16. For me, there's a couple of outstanding results there, particularly Featherstone Rovers. Yeah. Um, and we have got another discussion point, but Dane Chisholm, absolutely outstanding in that one. Um, they must have good halfbacks at Bradford if they can afford to get rid of Dane Chisholm, is all I'm going to say. Um, and, and while we're on just talking about Bradford, and the whole mergers thing, seeing as Andrew Charms has brought it up, why don't they merge with Leeds? Leeds Bradford, they've already got an airport after them. They could have it on the front of the shirts. They could, they could, they could. Um, but uh, yeah, the other result for me... They could that, be the Flyers. They could. <laughs> the other result that kind of stands out for me, Swinton Lions, they're a team on form, two out of two so far. 
Well, I mean, when was the last time they won back to back games? Well, it's been a while since, hasn't it? Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, I'm glad yeah, to see him doing well. They're having a dig, aren't they? They're having a dig. Yeah, I'm um, glad to see him doing well and uh, form picking up. The same can't be said at the moment for Rochdale Hornets. They've got a, a bit closer over recent weeks, but seem to have taken a step 42-10 back. 42 10 at half time, wasn't it? They yeah, seem to have absolute taken absolute a step shocking. back in that one. They've signed a lot of players from the amateur game who are looking uh, to uh, make their way. Apparently, fitness levels were appalling, I believe. From when Matt Callan took over, he said, All right, okay. um, the fitness level of the players was, was appalling, so uh, um, it might take him a bit of time to catch up. There's one of my mates from the recent Lancashire tour, Zach Baker, who's been signed, who made his debut at the weekend. He's a, a halfback. Can also You've also signed Oscar Thomas, player. haven't they, on loan from Swindon, which is a strange one. Yeah. but or, or to, Not to quite as strange as Martin Ridiard to Huddersfield, but sort of along them lines. To, yeah. be, to be fair, though, I mean, Oscar Thomas has really featured for Swinton. He's just been sitting on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But they made a massive deal of him when they signed him. He was going to be the star man. And, then, mm. and they're not doing too bad without him, are they? And Swinton, yeah. if they've won back to back games, well, they're, like, creep, they're creeping away from the, from the relegation zone. They, they obviously don't rate him too much because they're obviously not expecting him to inspire Rochdale to many wins. Uh, talk yeah. about inspirational, there's a couple of inspirational players that are playing for Barrow, and I'm really happy that we can talk about Barrow in more glowing terms, particularly for Dave Taylor, because I think he, he likes us talking about Barrow. <laughs> um, you picked what, out Catons, one what? guy a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, didn't you? Yeah, well, it's over Pereira Jr., who's been, I think he's flying under the radar at the club, he's been a linchpin to what they're, they're trying to do this year is quick around the rook. I said he, he reminded me a bit of Brad Dwyer in the way that he's, he's quick, he's good with ball in hand, and especially at the, at the summer bash, he was arguably their best player. And a hat-trick just at the weekend for star growth Amin as well, yeah. who <laughs> is a, a fantastic centre, great name by the way. It's brilliant. But yeah, the, the PNG contingent are doing well there, obviously. Will, Willie Minogue. What a name that is. Willie Minogue, is, is, is he still not back at the minute? He's not back at the moment. Not too sure. But, he's, but they he's have a, got Alex Asino as well. Yeah, so they've got, they've got a good contingent there. And now there's a, there's a song, you know, Susunio. There you go, that got a better reaction. That got a better reaction. I'm still trying to get over that name. What was it? Star Wars. Star Wars. Star, I think you should name your first born son Star Growth Dave. Star, <laughs> Star Growth Parkinson. We could be waiting a long time. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows anyone called Star Growth, give us a leave us a comment. Yeah, we do. Well, the part part room. Room. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other things that have kind of caught your eye maybe from the, the, the weekend just got? Uh, I think going back to the Swinton game, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Obviously, we've all probably seen about the, the aftermath of when of one of the uh, tries in the second half of Sammy Kabula, who obviously something's gone on behind behind the celebrations, allegedly with the ball boy. And there was a lot of players powering in. You, you wonder what, what will come out of that, but it didn't, it didn't look too good from the footage. Um, witness, how are they? Um, witness for pretty poor on Sunday it has to be said dude. Oh. they scored two tries they scored two oh. tries basically off York's mistake I think York, I think Robinson dropped the ball in goal off a kick through and witness touched down and then um, Will Oaks dropped I think the full back collected a kick passed to Will Oaks Will Oaks dropped it Joe Lines picked up and, and ran through and scored and witness just lacked ideas and attack and um, yeah it was uh, pretty Pretty lackluster from witness. I think they're yeah. they're obviously missing. You know they were, they had a pretty threadbare squad as it was, and obviously missing Jack. Don't Owens. sign him as well, I think. <laughs> Jack, <laughs> Jack, Jack Owens was uh, missing, and obviously Gellin's still missing. And I think I think if you put them two back in the team, you'd imagine they that's the sort of game they win. You know, witness have lost. You know, I think they lost six the last eight now. Um, but if you look at those games, yeah, they've not apart from Lee, the Lee game, they've not. Lost by a lot. They've been. They've lost by one. They've lost by two. They've lost by four a couple of times. They lost by seven. So they're obviously not far away. It, it, you know, it, we could quite easily be sat here and they could have won all them games. Do you know what I mean? So I think, um, I think they're just lacking a bit of nows personally. Yeah, they just need a bit of creativity yeah. back. I I've said this elsewhere. I wonder whether Witness are suffering the Bradford effect because they've rattled off all them points that they got deducted. Yeah. And then Bradford did exactly the same thing, where then they yeah, struggled it's, to Yeah, it's like you, you, set, you, you set your goal to get to zero, and then you put the... You know, it's almost like you you know, you know think you've... We've done it. You've, yeah, yeah, where the reality is, is ultimately that's the first step of the ladder, isn't it, basically? Yeah. 
you know, you look at I I genuinely thought Widnes could have got back to the top five, but then the the games that they've lost, you know, they've still not lost. They've they've only been losing with all due respect. I mean, York doing well, but with all due respect to the other teams, they've lost games that you would would have put down as you'd expect them to win. You know, you'd expect them to beat Dewsbury at home. I know Batley's tough, but you'd expect them to beat Batley, wouldn't you? And you'd expect you'd probably expect them to beat York. You know it. Being, being honest, so I mean they're losing to a lot of sides that are around them in the table now as well, aren't they? So I think, you look I mean, at I over think, recent weeks and you know Batley and Dewsbury have both managed victories. I don't think that I don't think they'll be I don't think Witness will be in relegation trouble. Um, here's where you can have a go at me for a change. You know, I mean Lee went to to lose and got the backsides handed back to him. On it's, the plate, it, to it's, an first, inter- so. it's interesting because to lose and Lee, I think are probably the Tony and Feverson are going very well. But to lose and leave, you watch them some weeks and you think, but then other weeks, they'll, they'll toss in a result that you're a bit surprised at. But to lose, do start, seems to get momentum. I understand that they're talking with the rugby union about ground sharing there, should they get promoted yeah. to Super League. It, you know, they were unlucky last year. It'd be massive, massive, I think, for the game if to lose can go up this year. Um, massive for France, not sure about the game. Well, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, you know, I, I think you look at results, I don't think. Lee will be losing much sleep about losing away at uh, Toulouse. And, and to be fair, I mean, Toulouse have been generally putting 40 points on everybody that they've played yeah. over there, haven't they? But, the, but then they have been getting uh, over here. There have been a couple of games where they've not turned up. Go back to the, the Summer Bash game against Toronto. Obviously, Toronto are a good opposition. But to, it, they made Toronto not have to work for that win in the fact that they, they picked up a few tries early on in the Wolf Pack and then there was, no, there was no real coming back. I think you're looking at Toronto will be first and Toulouse will be second. I think they start to Yeah, and I, I think Featherstone will be pretty good at the moment. I think I think it'll be fe- I think York will fall away at some point. I think it'll be Featherstone Lee. Do you think Sheffield will still No, I out? think I think York and Sheffield will just miss out. So maybe a Halifax pushing back in. Yeah, so I I, I think about Bradford also up there. I mean Bradford obviously wobbled a little bit. I mean it's gonna be interesting what happens in Challenge Cup this week because I think Bradford have suffered a little bit of Challenge Cup angle rather than mm-hmm. they beat Leeds yeah. and then they've They've been pretty poor, haven't they, in two championship games since. Just one point back on witness. We've uh, had a message from Michelle. Thank you very much. She says, the problem is we have too many young kids who are being out-muscled by older heads. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think... Yeah, to an extent, I think witness are missing a half-back. But then, yeah, if I was to sign two players for that witness team, I'd sign a half-back in it. And probably a, an older forward. See, I've got to be honest, you know, um, I, I'm going to be seeing with this myself on Friday night when they're playing yeah. against Sheffield. Um, I expected the Chapel House to both be much, much better at championship level than they I, have been. I, I've not read much about well, them. Well, I think it? they've done okay. They've, done, they've been steady. I think I, I compare them to, you know, about Jim Gannon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember Jim Gannon? Yeah. He, he's like. He was a good player, though. No, was, but, no but I'm saying. I'm not saying. Well, I'm not. Well, I don't think the chap the chap has a bad place. I'm just saying that they're quite they're steady. They never, you know, they never burst onto the ball from the kick off like a Joe Philbin or you know breaking through a tackle and getting their arm free. But they'll make yards, get up and play the ball and and tackle and and that's a bit like Jim Jim Gandhi used to call him inches because he used to he used to make a couple of meters every set every every hit up, but he'd never be. Back. You'd be never doing twenty yards or getting up with a quick play of the ball, whatever. So, I think I, I think they've done all right. I think I think they've done okay. Um, it's just it's just a forward pack. The whole thing could have need... just been dominated because yeah. there's no real game in the last few weeks where. Because obviously I've been to a few of the witness games like you've been to most of them, and there's, there's not been a game really where you've looked at it and thought right they they dominated the forward battle. It's always been a case of I, looking I... like men against boys in that department. They need so I'd say they, they just need so, like someone horrible in there, you know, like Ben Westwood or someone like that. <laughs> like like Leah signed Gareth, like Leah signed Gareth Hock. And I know he's a few weeks away from fitness. Gaz isn't horrible. I've like interviewed him. No, I've spoken to him. He's a lovely chap. I've got a lot to have Gareth Hock. But ultimately, he's the sort of person you want. If there's a little bit like Lee, some of Ash's good example, where I think one of the chap lads got roughed up on the floor, didn't he? Yeah. By one of the Lee lads. Toby Adams than it was, yeah. But, case not, to answer. but no one which was a terrible deceit. Yeah. But 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 you know what I mean? Whereas Lee have got a few, you know there was no like grunt about what, what's, after what's that? that? A few No, you know no, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, a, few. a few old heads, a few you know, they wanna they don't mind sticking it in a little bit, whereas I don't know. 
But at the same time, it, it, yeah, I, think, I think we're still lacking probably two players at the moment. Okay, okay, right. Um, let's move on before we come to blows or let's <laughs> 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 James Dunn. <laughs> Adamson should have been banned, let's be honest. Oh, he shouldn't. So he, he should have got a game for that. Yeah, he got away with one, I think. Got away. Or at least got simping during the game. Hashtag games gone soft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you heard that, Drew, hashtag games gone soft, Derbyshire over there. Mm. Right, okay. Um, so just the one championship fixture as well on Friday night, <laughs> which is that one involving uh, Widnes and Sheffield. Sheffield. Uh, and then it's onward and upward for the 1895 Cup, isn't it, which comes into focus this weekend. Um, also... Should we explain what's going to happen if, um, or do you want me to explain, I should say, what's going to happen if a championship team gets through? In the Challenge Cup. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can do. Do you know what's going to happen? I do imagine they play midweek sometime again, wouldn't they? Well, no, so what happens is, no, because obviously they're worried about the final, the Championship team getting to Challenge Cup final. Well, they not just pick the people at the beat. They no, so what they're doing is, if Bradford or Halifax reach the 895 Cup semi final, their semi final, because they're, they're due to be played on the same weekend as the Challenge Cup semi final. So what they do, they move the 1895 Cup semi-final to the Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Sure. What I expected. Yeah, but, yeah, but there's a twist to it. If Halifax or Bradford were to win their semi-final in the Challenge Cup and get to the Challenge Cup final, right. then the semi-final on the Wednesday would be between whoever's got to it, minus Bradford or Halifax, against the loser of the first semi-final on the Sunday. You with me? So let's say let we'll pick we'll pick Witness and Lee. Let's say the semi finals are Witness and Lee, Bradford and Feverston, yeah? Okay. But if Bradford, that, if that's Brad, a, if but Bradford, Bradford get through to the semi final. No, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. So it's Witness Lee, yeah. Bradford and Feverston, and Bradford get through to the Challenge Cup semi final. Bradford and Feverston will get rearranged to the Wednesday night. But if Bradford win their Challenge Cup semi final and get to the final, then Witness will play Lee. Let's say Lee beat Witness. Yeah. Witness would then play against Featherston in the other semi final uh, on the Wednesday. Ah, right, okay, okay. So they just get taken out of the equation altogether. Yeah. Um, right. I mean, obviously, the, I've seen a few negative comments about this saying, oh, well, the RFL ignored the rest of it. You know, it's not all just about Super League. But I've researched this, and I didn't know whether you might know, Dave. When was the last time a non top flight team reached the Challenge Cup final? Because it's, it's not happened in the Super League era. I went back to about 1980s and got bored, 1980 and got bored and stopped looking. I wonder when the Featherstone were... Uh, when they I were thought that, was that in 84, 80, 82, 83, something like that. Like I that. thought that, but were they I couldn't see any at the early. Time? I think they were, I think I read that they were, they were expecting to be fighting against relegation from the first division. Right, okay. And they had a cup run and they survived and that was like a, they got to the final. So, so, so as much as, you know, as much as everything con- has to be a conspiracy, you can't really have a go at the RFL for saying, for ex- you know, for thinking, well, actually, the I likelihood of a championship team is They have is to think remote, of a contingency, you know? didn't they? they no, and, that, and that's what they've come through, but I just think it's a bit harsh to criticise them for... I have to, I've not uh, seen much criticism of it. Um, well, that, well, I, I haven't said that because I've seen a post on our Facebook page, actually, on the story, okay. we did. The, I think we did a story on Wednesday or whatever it was, and someone just absolutely hammered the RFL and it was just like, come on. At least they're coming up with ideas of how to work around it, should that scenario I happen. mean, it'd be absolutely typical rugby league, wouldn't it, if Bradford did, or Halifax did make the final. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a great story. It'd be wouldn't funny, it? wouldn't it? Yeah. It would. uh, I mean, it could, I mean, I, I mean, you look at the Super League teams left and you think, well, they'd struggle. They, they, it's not like, look, with all due respect, there's not a, there's not an easy beat Super League team left in it. Yeah. If London Broncos, or, or Leeds, we're in it, <laughs> and Bradford got them semis. They might have a chance of the final, but... Uh, so, 1895 Cup round two, uh, Batley against Rochdale, Dewsbury against Swinton, Lee against Workington, Oldham against Doncaster, which we mentioned before, York play Newcastle Thunder, and then the games that are happening next Wednesday, which I'm sure we'll be able to touch upon next week, Barrow against Bradford, Halifax against Sheffield, Witness against Featherstone. I don't fancy witnesses chances over this next week. Before. Well, I mean, I was thinking about this. Do Featherstone, are Featherstone that bothered about the 895 Cup? Would they rather focus on getting the top five? Well, the players would be bothered, wouldn't they? Because every player dreams of playing at Wembley, don't they? So. Can you not have both dreams? Well, no, impossible. I, I you know, keep being, we keep being told I, that you can't I, 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 I just wonder whether Featherstone might look at that and think, actually, 
I'd rather we focused on whoever we play in the league on Sunday. Whereas for winners, I think the eight and five cups realistically all winners can do this year. Yeah. Um, I'd still love your songs for up the musical, by the way. This isn't going away. Um, and the other thing, who, who, who was the host at the draw for this? How did Lee get such an easy draw, Dave? Oh, I can assure you there wasn't any hot or cold involved. And I was quite surprised. Your word, impartial. I was quite surprised when it, uh, like they came out first. Because if you noticed, I gave reaction and sort of like played in such and such a thing last time, played at Wembley, blah, blah, blah. For everybody else but Lee, because they came out the hat first, so they wasn't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lou. Ooh. Yeah, but you were just you were just paused because you were like, oh, I wonder who they're gonna get, I wonder who they're gonna get. <laughs> I was excited. Yeah, I was excited. Yeah. I was excited by the draw. But you can't take that away from. No, me. We're, we're very proud. You know, I'm there. It was shirt and tie. Yeah, we see it's so your you new Twitter profile pic oh, as yeah, well these yeah. days, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still a decent picture that was, wasn't it? To be <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Let's us move on. Uh, Magic weekend. How was it for you? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I just, I mean, to me, I don't. I mean, obviously, I'm not a, I'm not the target market, I suppose, for it. To me, it makes no odds to me whether it's at Anfield, whether it's at Newcastle, whether it's in Scotland. It makes no odds to me because I'm just going to the ground and watching three rugby matches. I th- hang on, hang on. You made so much fuss about the week before going over to uh, the Camp New or the New Camp, depending on whether <laughs> you, you agree with Pat. Well, no, but well, I think you made so much fuss about that, uh, and you're telling me you've gone to Anfield now. You're like, yeah, just another week then. <laughs> <laughs> I think three games is too many. I, I mean, I like rugby, but sitting to watch three games back to back is just a bit. To be fair, it's difficult for you with these 45 minutes at our chats that we have, haven't it, on a Thursday? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you tend to look at it when I'm No, but you know what I mean? I, I just think, I just think, I think two games would be enough mm-hmm. on a day. Um, so what would you do? Would you then spread it and go to somewhere else? Well, I mean, we've been having this, we've been having a few discussions. Is do you do like what the NRL did, where they had sort of one, they had the same ground Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, didn't they? And they had like a game on a Thursday, a game on a Friday, a yeah. game on a Saturday, a game on a Sunday. Could you look at a bank holiday weekend and say, right, well, we'll have a game on the Thursday night, a game on the Friday night, two on the Saturday, two on the Sunday, two on the Monday, maybe get some championship teams involved. You know, could you do that? You know, I, I look. I sat on Saturday night, Wigan Warrington, and I looked at it and I thought, if you put this game on Wigan Warrington at Anfield, <laughs> you'd get the crowd that the whole day got just for that game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, and it looks better because the problem you also got with Magic is it's not a great advert for the sport because all the pitches have got loads of empty seats on because even if you sold Anfield out, which obviously you can't anyway, but let's just say they sold 50,000 tickets. It still look empty, any half uh, empty anyway, because not all of them will be in there at the same time. Where does that come down to? Is that is that the fault of Super League for not maybe pushing the tickets or not having no, an advertising campaign? Well, I think that's. Or... I think the other thing is, is the clubs don't feel. I mean, they, I might I might be wrong in saying this, but if it let's say if Warrington took a home game on the road to play Wigan, say Downfield. Are we heading back to the late nineties? Well, yeah, but you know yeah, what I mean. But like, is that more? The road are the club a bit more obliged to promote that game because it's there? I know the clubs have all got a share in Super League and Magic and all that, but I don't know. I, I yeah, I just think I don't know. There's just so I've never, I've never quite Magic Weekends never really sat right with me to mm. be honest. Really? I'd rather like Rugby Union do yeah. the double headers really well, so yeah. like they'll take games to Twickenham. You know, they have a, the first game of the seasons at Twickenham. They have London teams playing each other two games head to head there. And I just think, you know, you, you know, like, could you have had this year, you could have had Lee, Lee Witness, Warwick and Wigan as a double header, and then you could have had Bradford Halifax, Leeds Castleford, something as a double header, and, and I'd take, take that sort of concept. Right, okay. So, so, so you would be advocating maybe spreading it and involving the championship? Well, not necessarily. Well, it's like, you, it's all about getting fans in, isn't it? And I think. I, th- I think James, what you reckon? The, the issue they've got is obviously, or well, from my experience as well, that the fans who I was sat with were from a variety of clubs. What what you tended to find was they'd come in half an hour before their game, the game had finished, and they'd go. So they treat it like I said, like a one off game. They treat it like it was just them playing. What you need is for fans who are going in and treating it as an as an event, yeah. which I don't I don't think we're getting that much of. Um, I was talking earlier in the week about how they could make it look better for TV. 
but it's 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 a hard way of doing it in the fact that no matter how many tickets it sells, it could sell 40,000, 50,000, they're still going to get people who don't want to watch a Catalan versus a Wakefield or a Huddersfield be a Hull FC. They might just come in for, say, the last game of the play and then watch that game and then go home, which is the issue they're going to have because it's, ne- it's never going to look full when I mean, you've got I'll, fans coming and going. I, I'll admit, you know, uh, I've, I've worked a couple of these events in the past. I've just stopped the game I was doing. Yeah, watched yeah. about 20 minutes of well, the next I, one come home I, the most, I must admit the last experience I had when I went as a fan to Newcastle was dreadful because I'm I, my team played in the first game and I'm sat there and every five minutes I'm trying to watch the game and people are asking to walk past because they go in the bar or they go in the toilet and it's just it's not an, it's not a, I didn't find it a very enjoyable experience and it's like are we a little bit you know why are people obsessing about what there's to do outside the ground all the time mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That that seems to be obsessional. There's nothing to do outside the ground. Well, we're not here. You know, we're not here for outside the ground. We're here because you're meant to be here to watch three games of rugby. If you listen to the final Hoots podcast, I ask Adrian Jackson something similar about sort of the movement around the ground and going out and stuff. So um, get his views on that. I'm not going to repeat them here. <laughs> um, Lewis has joined us again. He said, "Magic is a money spinner for Super League." But is it though? Been. Is it though? Do they make money off it? I'm it's not convinced that they do. However, you jumped in. You jumped in oh, before sorry, he's sorry, finished sorry. his point. Sorry, this, this is what the light, Lewis. This is what the light. <laughs> Games on the road is a much better idea. Having worked at Magic Weekends for the RFL, it's a long slog even for the most die-hard of Billy fans. So I, he's agreeing with I, you. I, you know, I and and I'm, I bear in mind as well that. We're pretty look, well looked after in the media bit. You know, you, you've got a decent leg room. You can go downstairs, get a drink, whatever. Whereas, you know, you sat in a, you know, in a plastic seat for three games in a, in a normal seat. Well, no, I, I sent a message to you, didn't I? Say, no. Yeah, yeah. What's the leg room like? Yeah, it's it's, it's actually even that new standard, I feel like. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I just think, I think if you if you put it on the clubs, so if, like, say, if you said to the clubs, right, you've got to take a game on the road, and it's up to them to market it as one of their home games. I think that's you know you're giving them a bit more motivation to promote it and what have you, um, and I think you know we tried the on road games in the late nineties. The reason why that happened is because it is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think about the way the world now compared to them with social media, if you were to take Wigan Leeds to Coventry or whatever, you'd like to think that you had a better chance of getting people there because. Advertising and whatever, so yeah, there's a lot more around, around it, yeah, do you know what I mean? Right, Whereas, right. you know, what, what would they have done in that? It'd have been in the paper, maybe, that they were playing there, and, that, and unless the club invested a load of money in billboards or something around the city, but if you take Warrington, for example, they could focus their social media marketing on, say, Coventry to build up to that game. Yeah, could work. Uh, let's have a look more on the action. So, James, uh, standout performances for you you can come at this from a team point of view yeah you? I think I think in terms of team performance I think it's got to be Huddersfield with that with that, that massive win they were magnificent I don't think they Dan or Wilkintosh out of this world they, they, were, they were very good but I don't think they were they, were, they weren't world beaters I think the fact that Hull FC were that poor I think that made them look a lot better they, admittedly you had Adam O'Brien who had a fantastic game Ollie Russell in the house was brilliant Dan and McIntosh Shemaine McGilvery they, they had a lot of good performers the, the four Pat Matagi had a very good game but they were they were made to look good by a really poor whole side. I, I fall in love with Huddersfield off that game. <laughs> I, I, I said. Well, where are you going with I this said, No, I said I said I because obviously everyone talks about how bad Bull were and, and they were, but I I think Huddersfield were really good. I think I think they look I think they look like they've got potential that team. They need they still need a couple of they still need a couple of signings, but to go from. They've been they've struggled the last few years, haven't they? Because they've been tight on salary cap and and whatever. And obviously, he's had to rebuild. A few youngsters coming through. If they can get a couple of quality players, Gaskell as well. What about he's been very uh, what, he's been brilliant. And he, you know, stick him in that current lead side. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Ga- but he's a good player. He's just not had the best of luck, has he? And if he if he can stay, you know, <coughs> he, he he control things pretty well. I like Russell. Um, I thought Matagi. Matagi and uh, Akuma Tai, I thought they, yeah. they were brilliant. I thought the way they hit the ball up and, you know, they really set the example. But O'Brien was exceptional. I think O'Brien benefited because Hull obviously didn't have Danny Horton, did they? Yeah. yeah. And O'Brien just absolutely ran the game. I know, I know talking about Gaskell as well, it's, I don't think it's any surprise that he's come to the forefront now that Mike Crawley's been out of the team a little bit because of 
I don't know what it was. Hayward's probably getting back in. He must have got that perhaps for Russell, I think. Well, and I think, and I think that's a good example of where maybe a Huddersfield or clubs like that go wrong sometimes, is that you've got Oliver Russell there, who's yeah. proved now he's more than capable of playing with Lee Gaspel, not for all of you. Hasn't really got much pedigree, has he? You know, in comparison to other Super League halfbacks. So I'm like, you know, you look at that team, and I just think, you know, you've got you've got the benefit of McGilvery and Kudjo, Michael Lawrence are there, so they've they've been in that successful Huddersfield team, you know, there's a new breed of youngsters coming through, you know, Matty English is we've seen a few times in the championship, he's he's a steady a steady forward as well. Alex Matt, Miller as well. Yeah, Alex Miller's off contract, they need yeah. to keep hold of him. Um they've got Chester Butler coming in as well. Um they've got Oliver James is a big fan. Oliver, they've got Oliver Roberts, you know, they've got a decent you know, I, I think I mentioned this in a in a call this week. They need to what they need is they need Kevin Brown types. You know, they need two or three signings of established Super League experienced players like Kevin, like when they have Kevin Brown and mm-hmm. you know, may, maybe maybe someone you know maybe an experienced centre or something like that. I mean, Jordan Turner, to be fair to him, was not a not a bad player. But I honestly think if they if they get the next two or three signings right, I think we'll just sure compete in the top five. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what what I will say here is that we've got birthday wishes, not also to Pastor Lucy, whose birthday it is, her birthday Lucy, Woo! but also, also to the Isn't senior it? brothers. Sounds like we've got a crowd, <laughs> don't you? I'm, I'm liking the line. Is it the you? senior's brother's birthday today? It is, yeah. So I didn't make it into rugby league today. It's, like, it's Andy, it's Far- Far- Andy Farrell's birthday today. Oh, well, it's... It's well, not to do with Wigan, is it? So yeah. Drew's been writing that. He's got no chance no, of this. Right, right, right. what Wigan in fact, actually. in fact, it's Andrew Farrell's birthday, and it's also the 1999 Man of Steel winner's birthday. But that is the 1999. Well, I'm not sure you're giving up. Pass off it. Adrian Vowles, yes, indeed. <laughs> Adrian Vowles. Yes, but my birthday is the most important. There you go. So yeah, so um, Lucy's treating us all afterwards. Yeah, Nando's Warrington, if anyone's around. And this cake. And the, there is a lot of cake in this house, is it? Oh, it's great. When you bite. James is paying. Uh, I'll run through the other results fairly quickly. Castleford 16, <laughs> St. Albans 36, <laughs> Catalan <laughs> Dragons 25, <laughs> Wakefield 18. We've already spoken about Huddersfield 55, Hull 2. Hull Kingston Rovers 22, Salford Red Devils 20, Leeds Rhinos 24, London Broncos 22. They actually got a win. Uh, and Warrington Wolves 26, Wigan Warriors 14. I put a tweet out uh, midway through that St. Helens and Castleford game, mm. just asking when St. Helens were going to join the NRL because they just yeah. look so much better than anybody else in Super League. It, it was a really sort of boring game. <laughs> they, just got, they, they, they found it too easy, didn't they? Was, they? I think the problem you've got with the Magic Weekend is obviously you build up to the biggest game at the end and then when it's just a bit of a damp squib, it's a bit like... Oh, but it's taking I mean? nothing away from St. Helens, no, 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 is it? No, you know, but... It was like watching a Toronto game. They were playing with their opposition. Yeah. They're, they're making it look a bit easy, aren't they? The fact that, that what they can do with bow in hand at the minute and the, the, the cohesion between their, the spine of their team, between Coote, you've got the, the half-backs, even the, the forwards chiming in, yeah, low marks. The, the way that they're all linking up together, it's been really interesting. I think the thing with St. Helens is now they've got to win mm. one of the finals this year, haven't they? Because they've been so dominant. If they do win something, is that just an all book off? Or do you reckon it'll stop anyway? I mean, he's um, given a little bit of an indication on the latest final news podcast. I think he'll stay. I think he'll stay. I think he'll stay next season because I think he'll do if they win Super League this year, do the work on challenge next year, try and follow it up. And then, I mean, obviously, it all depends on what jobs come up in in the NRL. And you know, I I I, I still think they've got a bit more in him yet. Uh, Drew's been asked to make a bit of a guest appearance, so we can hear him from the background here. Um, Lewis has asked if if Greenwood's injury is a bit of karma because he reckons that he's turned into a right grub since he's gone to Wigan. Uh, <laughs> so you're just getting a big smile, Lewis. You're just getting a big <laughs> smile. I mean, I mean in, a, in a serious, a serious note, though, I presume that you know he obviously went off at the new camp and went off early at Anfield. Did they risk? Was he a was he a bit of a flight risk for Anfield? I thought Wigan did okay against Warrington. To be fair, I thought they defended pretty well. Uh, they were, uh, were, were they the better team? Like Adrian Lamb suggested. Or no, they were, were, are you... I thought I thought I thought Wigan defended. I think Wigan defended very as good as I've seen them defend for a long time. They only conceded three tries. They got they got very unlucky didn't they, in the second half where they had a bit of pressure and then 
the bounce of the ball fell to Warrington and Toby King has gone length of the field and that sort of broke the game. You never felt Wigan were capable of scoring many points, but and, and, you know, Sean Wayne's teams were all built on defence and I think maybe Adrian Lamb was maybe beginning to regret his statement at the start of the year where he was like, well, we're going to play a nice attacking brand of rugby. In my opinion, it's like, well, it's not about the style of rugby you play, is it? It's about winning, winning, winning the game. And as well, that they're not going to play an attractive easy on the eye style rugby to watch when they're leaving someone like Jared Sammer on the bench and starting Sean O'Loughlin at seven. O'Loughlin is a good is a good forward, Plastic. he's a good good ball playing forward, but he's he's, he's not a start in no, Super he's, League he's number not, seven. He's not Did you say yeah, past yeah, it? Not, he's, I'm trying to get a trying to get a nibble out of Drew, but he's I mean that, I have to I mean me and oh. myself <laughs> and Drew have had this same conversation about Sean O'Loughlin and to be honest a lot of other people uh, have had this same I, I He's a he's a he's a force that's on the way. No, I think I think I think there's still a place for him in the Wigan team, but just not a scrum half. He's definitely not a scrum half. That's for sure. That, that's for sure. You know, that, anyway, fourth prop, uh, full back, wing, centre. <laughs> I think I think Wigan are a lot better with him on the pitch than they are without him. But then at the same time, I think you know you waste. You wonder why they don't score it. They're not scoring many points if he's. I think the other thing I noticed about Wigan is they seem to change the team quite a lot. Yeah. You know, week on week, there's always a lot of shift in the team. You know, there's a lot of personnel changes, and I always wonder whether that's it, whether that harms them a little bit. We talked Blake Costin up more than once on this yeah. show. Um, again, I thought he came up with the, the, the te- some real telling contributions in that. His try were brilliant. Yeah, he had a he had a good magic weekend, and he's he's one of them who he's, he's performed well all season, I think, and. The big the big games he seems to seem to come out at Anfield. Obviously when he when he played away at St Helens he was marked out of the game basically when, when Saints came up triumphant he, he didn't have a chance to get hold of the ball whereas at Anfield he, he was really good and I think he showed just why Warrington spent the big money on him. Okay. Um I want you to ponder this one a little bit because uh who's been your shrewdest signing? I'm thinking this with regards uh, Dane Chisholm, who we mentioned before, since he's gone in at Featherstone, they've gone on to another level in the championship. Yeah. Uh, so, who mm. who would be your sort of shrewd signings in the season? I think the, the the obvious one for me, I think Lachlan Coop. Obviously, is when he when he came over, he had big big shoes to fill. Ben Barbary was absolutely sensational last year, and Lachlan Coop's a different kind of player. And people may be thinking he was possibly the cheap option, maybe not the right option that Saints should have gone for in the off season. But I think everyone who's doubted his ability to be one of their better players has been proved wrong. He's scoring every game, he's assisting every game. He fits into that set and spine seamlessly. The, the, way that, the way that they shift the ball is brilliant. They're so cohesive. and you, you, I don't think there's a facet to his game whereby he's not, he's not got anything. He's, he's good in every department. Defensively, he's, he's sound as he come. And he's got brilliant attacking and that's just backing up and reinforcing why he's arguably been one of the best players this year. James? Um, it's a very good question, Dave. <laughs> you did that same face when I asked you first of all. I know. I mean, Coop, Coop's a fair shout, but then I suppose when, you, when you're when signing big money players, you expect them to, to, to come good. I think you look at you look at Catalan and you look at who they... <laughs> what's he whispering to me? The, the ball, ball? The ball, Joe Bullock. Oh, Joe Bullock, yeah. He's a good shout. Sure. I was going to say, I, I think Tompkins is a good... I think Tompkins will always be injured. I think he just adds a bit of aura to Catalan that they didn't have. But what about Matt Whitley? Matt yeah. Whitley. Because yeah. he been getting in? he's been playing every week. He's Has one he? of the top tacklers. Yeah. He's been one of the top tacklers. Probably a good job him, to be yeah, honest. And that, well, that's what I mean. So he's a bit of a... He's full of a radar. Yeah. I wouldn't have signed him if I was Catalan. He doesn't really fit in with their... If you look at the Catalan, the typical pack, Catalan's pack, has he been playing more centre though? He's no, he's, he's been playing back row, so he's like, you know, he, I think he, you wouldn't necessarily fit him into the pack at Catalan, but obviously he works hard, tackles well. He got ran. He played at centre against Salford and got really ran over by Jake Bibby. Um, but when I've seen him in the pack, he's, I think he's, he's definitely better in the back row than at centre. Okay. Um, finally, Challenge Cup this weekend. Yeah. Uh, so what what are your thoughts on Hull these Catalan. games? The so whole Catalan starts us off. Be an interesting one. Catalan. I, I'd say Catalan, but it depends how. They've got Challenge Cup fever, aren't they? Challenge Cup yeah. fever. They won for it. Well, 
To be fair, Hull have got loads of motivation for this, haven't they? Because obviously they got tonked last week. They got tonked at home by a cat line in the league a few weeks ago. So if they can't, I think there could be a bit of pressure on Lee Radford if they don't win this one. Mm, interesting. Uh, Friday sees Hull Kingston Road versus folks Warrington. I, I go Warrington, but I think it could be a close one. I know Warrington are obviously taking it seriously. They've named an unchanged, unchanged squad, so it'd be yeah, good to see what I, I think I think Warrington will win, but I do think it'll be. I think Hull KL will give them a good run. Yeah. Saturday sees St Helens take on Wakefield. Saints. Yeah, Saints will run over with that one. Uh, and Sundays, this is a really interesting one for me. Bradford against Halifax. I think Bradford. I think Bradford have got to because of the way yeah. they played in the league. I think. The way they played in the league in the two weeks since they beat Leeds is all pointing towards the folks now the cup match. Yeah. Um, you know, and John Kay loves it, doesn't he? John Kay loves Challenge Cup. He'll, he'll be thinking, if we knock these off, we're in this double header at, at Bolton for the semi final. If we can, if we get drawn against Catalan or Hull or whoever, we'll fancy it. Just before we go, just a couple more points which you've uh, kindly added for us. So, um, Lewis has said Matt Davis at the wire. He reckons yeah. he's flew under the radar. He's, wait, he's had to wait for his chance. Yeah, he's not played many games. He's, he's not played many, but now he's got in the team. Really well. Paul yeah. Harrison has said uh, Matt Davis and Jake Marmol as well. Now he's starting to get a few games under yeah, his belt. Yeah. Uh, one, I, one I was... Um, who's on about now? Joey, Joey Lossick. Oh, he's Marvin Joey. Yeah, but he signed last season. He can't have him. Well, he always signed on a short uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drew's missing out for a technicality. What about... what? Chris Minou. He's been decent. He's, been, he's, he's, he's gone so far. Chris Nini isn't actually a bad shout. He's been very good since he's gone to Salford. I think you said he said he kicked 29 or 31 goals, I think, before the weekend, which is a fair yeah. effort. Did, um, he, did he get 31 attempts at Witness? That's this. It's difficult, isn't it? Because there's not been. The, it, there wasn't a lot of move. There's not, you don't feel like there's been a lot of move. You know, when you're trying to think of players that have moved, it's difficult, isn't it? You don't necessarily. You know, you don't necessarily. You th- you, there's obviously players that are stepping up. Jordan Atwell's been good for a woman. Paul's, Paul's, Paul's also given a good shout to Jason Clark as well. Right? He's been a machine since he's gone in at one. Mm. He's, he's been all right. It's not been. It's not been. Ooh, I, ooh that was a bit. Oh, oh, a controversial oh, comment, James. Oh, yeah. Nah. Yeah, we'll, right. have, we'll have to clip that and send it into uh, Warrington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been alright. It's got actually this Steve, Steve Price oh. will be on the office blower. <laughs> oh. And just as long as he's not conducting that same tackle technique, you know, Wolfie at the weekend. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a six man. The, the, best thing, the best thing about that was how Wolfie had his head on the back. So that's us just about done, Dustin, for this episode of Love Rugby League Weekly in association with our sponsors, Betfred. Uh, we'll be back again very soon.